Ladies and gentlemen, the show we've all been waiting for. Paranormal Buzz Radio is proud to present REP Paranormal and Friends with your hosts, Kim Purvis and Allison Robinson. Live every Thursday night on Spreaker, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Be sure to check out their Facebook page, REP Paranormal Busters. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Thanks for joining us tonight on uh, R.A.P. Paranormal and Friends. Um, we have Change Up and Guest Night. We have Cynthia with us tonight. So, Cynthia, thank you for being with us. You are very welcome, girls, anytime. Okay, yeah. So, tonight, we are just going to talk about whatever. Whatever anybody <laughs> wants to talk about, we're going to talk about it. I don't care what it is. We're just going to do it. So, somebody's got something they want to talk about, let's just do it. Let's roll with it. I have that for me. <laughs> so you're going to Ferrar Saturday, huh? Yes, ma'am. We will be at Ferrar Saturday. Um, I am actually subjecting my sister uh-huh. to Ferrar. <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. This will be the first time she has ever done anything that has to do with the paranormal. So I'm kind of excited. That's pretty cool, actually. Oh, yeah. Hopefully she'll have oh, yeah. a good time. Oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to de-virginize her from the paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> Darren wants to know how you're doing. I'm doing great. How who's doing? Everybody. He said, how's oh. everybody doing? Eh. It's going. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> eh, it's going. It's going. I haven't really yeah. slept much. I haven't had anything really to eat today and I'm two beers down so we'll see how that Absolutely. plays out <laughs> oh boy well I okay, guess I have no beer in the house so yeah I don't and I took my bottle of wine home that she gave me the other night so I can't have that well I would say if she ends up on the floor you know Kim and I can just take over okay that sounds oh, good wait a minute. I got a bottle of tequila out there. Oh, man. We know what tequila does to me. I get hauled out the back door of a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> tequila true, don't like her. True story. True story. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first time ever that's ever happened to me. <laughs> hey, Roland, if Roland was here, Roland would join you in a shot of tequila. Oh, my gosh. That would be fun. Yeah, he would. He likes his tequila. I used to, till I can't drink it no more. Me too. Yeah, I mean, me too. I, it bothers me now after that day, because let me tell you, that was not fun. My And the gals that I was working with, one of the doctors, she had to carry me in my house. <laughs> she doesn't let me live that down. <laughs> I have been that bad. Sad to say, I have been that bad. <laughs> the, the funny oh. thing was, we were driving around the corner when they were carrying her in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had one friend that was taking pictures <laughs> and Snapchatting me, and the other girl was trying to haul me up the stairs. Oh, no. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, um, yeah, we're really excited about Saturday. We 
Farrar was our first ever investigation, and so we're really excited to get back there. I love the school. Definitely yeah. love yep. that school. Well, and it's, it's, it's such a good, it's a good reason to go, you know. It's a yeah. fundraiser. It's, it's helping out uh, Will and Jackie and just, you know, it, it helps to show show unity in between the teams and and the uh, people in the paranormal field here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. And Farrar's a good place to take a beginner. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's where I usually take if anybody wants to learn, that's where I take them first. Is Farrar? Yeah, it's pretty. It's- Farrar is pretty passive. I mean, there's a few spots in there that would probably give somebody the heebie-jeebies, but (laughs) overall, it's not a bad place. No, it's not. No. I haven't decided. (laughs) I'm not going to take much equipment since there's going to be a lot of people there, so I'm just going to take what fits in my pocket. I think that's pretty much what we're going to do, too. I think we're going to keep our equipment down to a minimum. Um, I know we'll probably grab both of the recorders and probably grab a camera, maybe. Uh, I, I, I've taken my one millimeter, uh, the K2, the recorder, and whatever else fits in my pocket. There you go. Yeah. Pro- probably my laser grid. I like using it. <clears throat> Oh, hey, that's an idea. I should stick that one in my pocket when I go. Yeah. Because I have one, too. I that thought about probably... the SLS camera, but with so many people there, I just don't want something to happen to it. And... Yeah. Well, I... and, and, you know, you don't know, you're not, you don't know the experience of the people that are going to be there. Right. Yeah. And if somebody runs into me and it falls out of my hand, then I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I do have a tech guy that can make one for under a hundred bucks. Uh, he's going to be making us one. We've already talked to him. Yeah, because we've already got everything for it. Yeah, we do. We have everything, literally. He's just got to give us this, help us with the software. <laughs> yeah, which he will do. I know. We've already talked to him. We just got to find that time that we both can meet. Right. Yeah, he's got such a screwy schedule anymore. It's um, he's like four months out of the year he works. Sorry, it's my dog. Uh, four months out of the year he works. Um, like he has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, and then another few months out of the year it's uh, fr- thir- Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that. Yeah. Or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or something like that. Yeah. So he's got a really screwy schedule. So he's 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 one of the ones that makes it really really hard for us during certain months of the year to be able to schedule uh, investigations because we have to work around his schedule. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's oh, it's kind of interesting. Okay, why is it that whenever I go to do a show yeah. or a live video, my animals decide they want to play? I don't know if you can hear this growling in the background. I can't hear much. I have, I've been having ear problems, so I can't hear much anyways. And then to put these in there, it's re- everything's really muffled, so I can't hear them. It's not bothering me. Nope, I can't I have- hear my dog either, so... I have this little I have this little ball of fur that is sitting here with this if I can get it out of her mouth, beat up penguin. <laughs> penguin. <laughs> she wants to play. <laughs> they always want to play when you're doing something yeah. else. <laughs> so then when she gets tired of me, she takes the penguin and goes and runs over to the couch and sits in the corner of the couch, on top of the penguin, and stares at. <laughs> oh, she, she is so Roland's brat. She is. She is so <laughs> dog. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Come here. Fi- well, I'm trying to figure out this my spreaker. It's 
driving me insane. <laughs> Uh, Darren wants to know, is uh, everyone's next piece of equipment you want to get? Oh, Lord. Um, Darren, don't ask that question because you know the boys have a list a mile long. <laughs> I know Roland's, Roland's been wanting to get, I'm going to try and get us K2 meters um, before we go down to the Sally house. Uh, uh -huh. We actually do not have K2 meters of our own. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, I am going to get us a couple of those before we go down to the Sally house. Um, what else? There was something else that he... Oh, he wanted a drone. Oh, He yeah. wants to buy a drone so that he can do, like, video footage and stuff from outside and get, you know, outside footage of the places we go. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I don't know. They're expensive. They're expensive. <laughs> Just get a cheapy one. Try it out first. See if you like it. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> he keeps he keeps asking me, "Can we get a drone? I want to get a drone. We need a drone. We need to do it." We need to get a drone so that I can do camera footage. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, I, keep, I keep touching Kim's, uh, her, uh, her headphone thing, and I keep yanking them out of her ears. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Shay needs to get a night vision cam. Video cam. I've got yeah. one. I'm just waiting for my lights to get done. I'm on a six yeah, month wait. I've got, got a couple I've got of good nights. Through deadlight. Oh, did ya? Yeah, and I'm on a six month wait. Are you getting the bigger floodlights? I'm getting the sixty one. Whatever. Oh there It's his newest one out, I think. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm on a list and he said it'd be six months. Okay. I, that gives me time I to just, save for it. Yeah. I just looked at chat. No, Josh, we're not going streaking. <laughs> yep, Josh is here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Josh. Yeah, Josh is an, actually an ex-coworker of mine, um, and he worked the bar with me when I used to bounce at the bar. Oh, sweet. See, I know, I know Josh from her chat, so oh. you haven't got yep. to meet Josh I have yet. not met Josh yet, so hi, Josh. <laughs> Welcome to the insanity tonight. We don't know what we're talking about tonight, so we're just going to roll with it. So whatever you want to talk about, let's talk about it. And no, we are not going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Josh's first... Uh, <laughs> First normal words when he hits our chat. So let's go streaking. Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe if we all have some tequila. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't no, think so. I, yeah, no. It, I, I would choose not to get sick tonight. Thank you. <laughs> if, I, if I drank the tequila tonight, I'd be itching all night long. Yeah, you would be. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I'm aller I, I, I used to drink all the time, and now I'm allergic to alcohol. I can't drink. I'll break out itching and get feet oh, wow. red. And huh, I have not heard anyone that had that problem. Yeah, I know, right? That's an unusual one. Darren wants to know what the big word for the day is. Um, wow, I gotta think about that one. Yeah, because Roland's at work, so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Roland's favorite one is anti-disestablishmentarianism or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Sorry, use I big words. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use the big words, so I, I tend to stay away from those. If I can't they give me it, it, I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good concept to go by. Very good concept to go by. If I can't eat, if I can't spell it, I don't use it. I'm gonna have to remember that one. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh. 
simplistic is yeah, real docious. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that, and she just typed it. So. <laughs> A little bit of Mary Poppins in there. Yep, yep. that's right. Oh, brother. What's the tinfoil for? What's the what? Josh said, I'll be good, kind of. I just bought more tinfoil. <laughs> See, it's not coming up on this part. Oh, so I don't... oh this... there it is. There. Oh. I don't know. What... I don't, I... Yeah, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> With him? No. <laughs> no. No, you're safer if you don't know. He's like, Allison, trust me, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. You're, you're safer if you don't know. Uh, well. Unless he's going to make himself hats. Make himself a what? Hats. The tinfoil hats. You know oh, that they... yeah, hats. Okay. Uh, I bet it's not a hat yeah. for that. <laughs> Maybe he's calling in the aliens. Maybe. He could be calling that, that, in the aliens. That, I don't know. That would not surprise me. <laughs> Matt, so what do you got for word, next what? on your list? What do you girls have next on your list aside from Ferrar? Uh, the squirrel cage in September. Yep. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's when? The 14th? The 14th, the 14th yeah. yeah. We've never been. I mean, I've been there for a day tour, but it's years ago. Uh-huh. So we're going to go and see what it's like. Awesome. Yeah. Be awesome. That'll be fun. Definitely. You'll love, you'll love it. We've been there. We've been there. I think we've done squirrel, squirrel Cage once. Um, we definitely want to go again. It's another one like Ferrar. Yeah. It's not, it's not too over the top, but it's active enough that if you were to take newbies in there with you, you'd be fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. We actually, um, if I could find the video of it, I have it somewhere. <clears throat> um, we were sitting on the second tier and um on one end of the second tier there is a cell where a guy hung himself and then um if you go just, just a little ways down there's a, a little bit bigger cell uh just right next to it and so roland goes sticks two flashlights in these cells and asks for them to turn them on and, of course, he gets results. And so he, he's just going crazy because he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, they turned on, they turned on. And so he runs downstairs to get the other people that were with us at our group. And I'm sitting up there trying my hardest to get them to turn them on again. Come on. Oh, you, I know you can. I'm sitting right here. I saw you do it once. Do it again. Do you think I get anything? Nope. Nothing. But the minute he starts walking back up the steps, yeah, they come then on. They go. Yep. Go figure. I was so mad. But you know, I think I think it's because um I had just started my security job not too long before we went to the squirrel cage. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering if that doesn't have something to do with it. Because when we went in there, um the, the ones that were in our group with us, uh, one of them was my boss. And so we both made it known that we were law enforcement, you know. And so I'm wondering if that didn't kind of make a few people angry when, I, when we did that. Um, because being in a jail, you know. Uh-huh. So Roland wants to actually go back to the squirrel cage and put me in full uniform, uh -huh. in my full security uniform, and have me run around there and see what happens. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. And Shay, because to your question, no, we have not investigated together yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. We will Saturday We're working night. On it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We'll get the first try at Saturday night. Yeah, for a little bit. De well, depending on depending on if, how they split us up into groups. Yeah, we'll just have to kind of make it our way over to your group. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, 
Let's see. We'll integrate. Josh said, and alien telepathy is how I call home, Sin, so bite me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, that, that, yeah, mm. I'm going to choose to be good because I'm on somebody else's show. And <laughs> you can say whatever you want. I don't care. Let it go. Let it rip, Tater Chip. Just let it go. <laughs> and I'm on a radio network, and I don't want Shay to come after me, so I'm going to be a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to piss Shay off. Nope. nope I know nope. we don't want to do that. Because but... she'd hunt us down. <laughs> She cut off Iowa just for that. I know. <laughs> that would be the reason why she comes out to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I know the girl running it. I'll put a whisper in her ear. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Put us in the same group. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Josh says not- he's keeping it PG-ish. It's a miracle in of itself. <laughs> that is a miracle in of itself that he's keeping it PG. Well, we were going to really- have two guests tonight. We were going to have you and Kelly on, but Kelly had something going on, so she couldn't be on tonight. She w- she wanted to. So we were going to just, you know, since our other guests had to cancel, unfortunately, we we're going to have mm-hmm. two people on here, and we we're going to have fun, but. She had she had to get ready for this weekend, so I understood. Yeah. And putting you yeah. and Kelly in a room together, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. When Kelly and I get into a room together, you do oh boy. Yeah. We we're yeah. We have fun. We have a I lot of fun. We'd make it a girls' night out, you know, and have two guests and but like I said, she's getting ready for Saturday night, which I understood. I think we kind of scare the boys when we get into a room together. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, that or they get mad at us because, like, when we went to Edinburgh, they accused us of stealing all the spirits. <laughs> That's <laughs> Allison. <laughs> she steals all the spirits from us, too. I do. I well, do. I can't help it. Oh, and and you're not going to be able to because because mediums and and intuitives and things they have a little bit brighter light. Uh huh. So the, so we tend to we tend to draw the spirits to wherever we go. Yep, exactly. That's why and we so, around her a lot when we investigate. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> till till dolls uh-huh. start coming at us, and I'm done. <laughs> I was afraid a mannequin was going to fly off the bed at us or something. I'm like, if that mannequin moves, I'm out. I will jump out a window. I don't care. <laughs> well, you're going to have I don't like about the Brager house is those mannequins. You're going to have yeah. fun with the squirrel cage then. Huh? I said, you're going to have fun with the squirrel cage then. They have oh. tons of them in there. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I swear that one on the bed in the girls' room, her eye was moving. I, I'm sorry, but it looked like it was moving, but That would have been Jen. creepy. Hi Jen. Hey. Jen's listening from work. Hey Jen. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh oh, Roland's in the room. Everybody hide. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing anything. <laughs> We're not talking about him. No, no not at all. No, not Never. at all. Mm-mm. We wouldn't do that. Never ever. <laughs> What's Josh talking no. about now? Uh, I think he's talking to Roland. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Wait, yeah. Special cookies. I missed those when I came in. <laughs> we must have too. Rolling, I do nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Oh, he, Josh says they took all the tequila rolling. <laughs> Damn it! He's not supposed to. Oh, he needs to quit giving away our secrets. I know. Josh, be a good boy. Quit telling Rolling everything. Shay says Rolling <laughs> is the bestest behaved. <laughs> wow. Hey Shay. We need to talk. 
You and I need to talk, honey. Okay. If he's got you that snowed, we really need to talk. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, no, but, <laughs> yep. but no, the squirrel cage, um, let's see, they have a mannequin in the infirmary. Uh-huh. They have a mannequin sitting in one of the cells in tier two, I think. I think so too. Uh, yeah, from what I remember. I'm trying, trying to remember where they're all stashed at. They have one standing in the corner somewhere. Cause that's the one that told, that's the one of the ones that totally freaked me out when I went in there. Mm-hmm. So I was just walking the second tier and I walk into this corner and all of a sudden there's this thing standing there looking at me. I was oh, like, Whoo. The creepier one, though, is the one they have in the infirmary because they actually have it laying on the bed. And oh. the way they had it laying on the bed when we went there, yeah. it had, like, one arm positioned, like, up over its head and the other arm was, like, at a funky angle. <laughs> it was just weird. Oh. oh, gosh, yeah. I don't remember. It's been years since I've been there. She's done <laughs> the day tour, but yeah, I did the day never tour. investigated it. Oh. Yeah, I haven't investigated yeah. it yet. Roland, tell him you screamed like a, uh, like who you are. Yes, I screamed like a girl. Yep. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> I did, but that'll never beat him screaming like a girl seeing his reflection in the mirror at Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Did you get that on <laughs> film? I actually did. I have it on a Facebook Live that I saved, and I am going to find it. I'm going to post it on Raven Rose. There, oh, you, there go. you go. That is sweet. And I am going to mark the timestamp on when it happens so that they can listen to it. Oh my gosh, that's great. Oh Shay, yes. Shay said you mean like a boy, right? Yeah, that's, that's it. I screamed like a boy. <laughs> Roland says it's on Facebook. Yeah, it's on Facebook. <laughs> it's on Facebook. I think it I think I did post it. If I didn't, I will. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, you'll have to show me. Oh, yes, it is. seen us scream, so we need to see somebody else scream. Gosh dang, I had it. Yeah, that scream. I don't even know if I could replicate that scream. <laughs> that, that, that just about had me drop the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was just busy talking to people on the live chat, and then all of a sudden I saw that, and I just let it rip. Like, I was just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you did. I did. <laughs> I, know I did. Said, I just dropped the phone. We sent a message to Josh, and he, he watched it the next morning, and he said his jaw hit the floor. <laughs> I bet it did. I bet it did. Yeah. He couldn't believe it. And, and um, they showed a picture of Josh's office. It is in Rosie's box. He yeah, I saw that. Sweet. I saw he put the poor book in Rosie's box. So now she's stuck. Yep. She's she's not going to fly at anybody now. <laughs> not that one. You just wait. There's that curly little the, uh, there was, one. There's two more that are creepy there. Oh, did, have you? I, want, I don't know what rooms they stuck them in, but Hauser left two of them. When we went to the Para 101 that uh, um, Paranormania had with uh-huh. Chris Smith, Hauser left two of them. At the house. Oh, those two! I swear, when he left and he left those two, those two dolls there, they have something attached to them because all night we weren't getting a whole lot. I mean, we were getting things here and there. Yeah. But Roland and I had gone down to the nurses' wing and or the nursing home wing, and I was sitting down there and we were doing a necrophonic session, and I had the headphones in and everything. And I ended up having to stop at the end because I was getting ch- children's laughter. Okay. And it wasn't Inez. Wow. Yeah, it was not Inez. I know Inez's voice. I know Inez's uh-huh. is feel. And that yeah. was not Inez. I, I know that, yeah, because that one, I knew there was something up with her. I said that the first time I had seen that doll and it slightly moved on Kim and I that night. And then... Yep. That next night, I'm like, there is something wrong with that doll. There is something. There is something with that doll. And lo and behold, <laughs> takes a flying leap off the dresser at us. 
and there's a little there's another one that looks similar to her and it has uh -huh. blonde hair and it's in the media room that doll freaks the shit out of me too there's nice no that doll either there's yeah oh. yeah josh said uh because he thought that's the doll we were talking about and we go oh no that doll huh -uh, that no <laughs> yep yeah, no because yeah he said that one creeps him out too so yeah. and darren had a question here he said, what is one of the locations you would investigate by yourself all night long? I kind of agree with Shay. There's nowhere because safety first. I at least have to have one more person <laughs> just in case. Not so much the ghost, but in case something happened and somebody got hurt. That's true. But if, I don't really if care I, at this point. Stick me anywhere. I don't care. If I had to happen. choose a I would say I would at least take one person with me and have them, like, at least by the door or something, you know, of the place. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Gads. I don't like being stuck by myself. Um, <laughs> probably. I could probably do Malvern by myself. Yeah. If I had somebody down in the in the safe room. You know, yeah, that know. was that was just going to sit there all night and I was stuck upstairs or somewhere else, you know, and they were just confined to that room. Uh -huh. I could probably do Malvern by myself. I could I do, could, I could not do it by myself. Somebody was just in the safe room. Yeah. And I could do Farrar. Farrar, I can walk around there by myself all night Same. long. Oh, yeah. Farrar's not, Farrar's not too bad. So Edinburgh, forget it. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. There's something not, about Edinburgh. Not, I not, not do after by I came across that grumpy old man. The last time I was there, he was. He wanted me down in that boiler room so bad. Which is funny because the last time we went as a group, yeah, we didn't want anybody near that boiler room. We kept asking them, you know, can can Roland and, and Taylor go down in the boiler room? You know, are they going to be okay going down there? And they just kept getting no, 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 no. See, he kept, and, yeah, he kept calling me down there. But, like, when Gina and I went to go down there, we got a woman's voice, and she said, no, go back. Don't go. Go back. So we ended up yeah. going back down there. But he, like, kept like, I kept hearing him in my head, like, you know, you need to come down here, run, run, come down here, come down the hall, yeah. come downstairs, come, you know, and, yeah, yeah, he was something, he, I've never encountered him before when I was there, but that night was a whole nother story from what we've had before. I, I, want, I want to say he's the one that is always in the like the maintenance area, you know, back where that padded room is and everything. Right. If you go downstairs, I want to say he, he like roams back and forth in between there and the boiler room. Because when I go to Edinburgh, if I go down in the basement, I cannot, I absolutely cannot go back by that padded room or anywhere further than that. Mm -hmm. Back towards the, like, <laughs> I would have such an issue if we went to Edinburgh and there was a tornado, because that's the tornado shelter. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. I can't go back there. I just, there is something that stops me every time I try and go. If so. something like that happened when we were at Edinburgh, I'd leave the place unlocked. I'd go to the safe house and go to that basement before I'd go to the basement in Edinburgh and live through a tornado. Mm, yeah, I'd probably be a little more comfortable out there, but not a whole lot more comfortable because even in that safe house, the safe house that they have back there that, that we get to use for the restrooms and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even that one's creepy. Oh, yeah. We usually have somebody talking to us in the bathroom when we're trying to go to the bathroom. Yeah. What? Now I have to take her outside. That's why I sat down here, because now I can move. <laughs> I'll just take you with me. Come on. So if it gets a little loud, I'm just moving from inside to outside for a second so I can let my dog out. 
Hey, that's okay. That's no problem. Josh goes, Allison, welcome to the randomness that is my head. I have shiny object scattered brain syndrome. <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> welcome to all things Josh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Gosh. But yeah, we we I don't know. Edinburgh Edinburgh is a lot of fun until you get that one certain Here. spirit. Just yeah. has to, oh. <laughs> you know, that yeah. just has to scare the crap out of you. Yeah, I know. Uh, Roland wants you to talk about the necro session in the coffin room. Ah, if anybody gets the chance to go on the Raven Rose Paranormal page on YouTube, and yes, make sure you type in Raven Rose Paranormal, because if you just type in Raven Rose. You get a stripper page. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <clears throat> but if you type in Raven Rose Paranormal, there is a video on there that is probably about, I think it's about 45 minutes long or so. And it's of a necrophonic session that Taylor and Roland did in the coffin room at Edinburgh. Uh-huh. Um, Kelly, Mama Pat, and I had all decided to leave. Uh, Kelly and Mama Pat went home, and I went out to the van to go take a nap because I had been working all morning. So um, the boys were in there, and they sent Emmett out to the van to go to sleep, too, because they just they felt like he, he wasn't going to be very effective in there because he was tired as well. And, you know, when you're tired, you don't want to be in a place where you can make yourself vulnerable to the spirits that are there. Right. So they did a necrophonic session in the coffin room and Roland had about a 19 minute, if not a little longer, um, conversation with the spirit on the necrophonic. Oh wow! And the funny thing, and the funny thing is, you know, if you're listening to the necrophonic, ninety percent of the time, it's going to lead the direction of the conversation because you know you ask it a question and it'll say ball or it'll say something, and then you're going to go in the direction of whatever it says. Well, Roland actually managed to get this thing to follow his direction of the conversation, and um. He was getting answers like he would ask, what do you see when you see us? And it would say light. And then he said, well, what do you see when you see Kelly or Cynthia? And it said beacon. And Roland thought it said peaking. So he said, peaking, what's peaking? What, What are they peaking at? You know, what are they looking at? And Taylor comes back. And starts chuckling. And he says, I just got a very strong male voice. Said, she said beacon. So, I mean, it corrected him. Oh, wow. And, and you know, ITC devices don't do that. Not normally. So, they had a very, very interesting conversation. And if you get the chance, you should really check that video out. Because it, he, he kind of breaks that conversation down. He took out, um, like, the dead air and stuff, so he, he condensed it a little bit. But it it was really, really neat. Wow. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, actually. Definitely. It was. It was, it was really cool. I mean, it, it. Roland said, you know, Roland did the normal paranormal investigator thing. If you're here, can you make a sound? Can you yeah. close the coffin lid? Can you um, knock on the wall? And then he made the little sarcastic remark of, or, you know, you can just knock the cross off the coffin. Mm-hmm. And and I guess Taylor, Taylor comes back with another chuckle and he looks at Roland and says, it just said, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it, it it was it was interesting that he was able to actually get a full on conversation with that. Yeah, that is that is actually definitely cool. Every time we did a session up there, they wanted me in the coffin. Yeah, they did. I, I, I know. Pants. 
Every yeah, time I we use spiritus or necrophon, they wanted me in the coffin. Nope. Yep. Uh-uh. Yeah. Nope. Um, we have a, a place about 15 minutes away from us. Um, I know we've talked about it, and we're trying to get all the video together and stuff so we can actually make a video of it. Uh, we did the Shaler Haunted House in Shaler, Iowa. Yeah. And, um, it is an actual haunted attraction, haunted house. Uh-huh. And um, when you first walk in the door, they have this waiting room that they stick you in, and they kind of tell you the history of the place and stuff. And, and what you're doing is you're sitting on these chairs, and there's a coffin in front of you. Well, they actually put people in this coffin, and I sat there, and I'm like, there is no way in hell you could get me into a coffin, let alone shut the lid and have me lay in there. Oh, Never. No. no. Mm -mm. no. I am claustrophobic enough as it is. My anxiety would be through the roof. <laughs> Darren says, so stick me anywhere I don't scare easy. I look at it as a challenge. Yeah. Um, Darren, there's a few places that even you wouldn't take as a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Um, let's see here. Josh said something. What did he say? I lost it. Oh, no revealing his secret identity. <laughs> he, he said that, and then, um, don't make me break out the bedazzled unitard and sing show tunes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see this bedazzled unitard. So do I. <laughs> I have not seen this yet. Yeah. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna break out of a dazzled unitard and sing show tunes, does that mean you're gonna put the wig and the makeup on and everything? He wants I mean, if you're hear, gonna go, he wants to hear Valley Girl. <laughs> Wanted to hear Valley Girl sing? <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's scary. Hmm. I oh. Now I have visuals in my head that I really didn't need. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know this person, but I don't want it to go through my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of intrigued. <laughs> I want to see this bedazz bedazzled unitard. <laughs> so do I. I, I. I have not seen this yet. And apparently she's willing to bust it out. So I will have to get a picture of it sometime, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, Roland, Roland actually. Roland said, "Go into the closet where the supposed hanging where Inez died. Close the door. It's pretty gnarly." Yeah, Roland and Taylor. I have a funny story about that one too. First time we had ever gone to Melbourne. Roland and Taylor decided that they wanted to do uh, an EVP session in Inez's room. Uh -huh. And we had a Facebook Live going, I think. And um, one of the questions that Roland asked was, do you mind if I, you know, go into the closet? Well, at that time, we heard nothing. So he was like, okay, so do, 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 he walks into the closet, shuts the door, stands there for a little bit, comes back out, looks at Taylor, said, do you want to try it? Taylor's like, heck yeah. So Taylor goes in, comes back out. Well, when we were going over our EVP evidence, when Roland asked, do you mind if we go into the closet, you get a very strong but uh, very breathy whisper of a no. So he tore Inez off. She would not talk to him for the rest of the night. She would not answer him, would not interact with him, nothing. It took him until, I think, the third time we went there, which was in February of this year. We went there to go and do pictures that... Uh, Thomas Hunsaker did for us, and he did an awesome job, by the way. Uh, Glimpse of Brilliant Sanity Studios, if you get the chance, have him do your photos. He does the best what he calls creeptography in the uh -huh. world. It is awesome. But anyway, Roland went up to Inez's room, and he actually apologized to her. He said, I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. You know, do you forgive me? And since then, 
all she does is talk to him. <laughs> so he was forgiven. But it was just funny because for like two, you know, the, fir- the first time we went and the second time, she wanted nothing to do with him. Absolutely nothing. And he was so crushed. He was just so heartbroken because she would not. She wouldn't even she wouldn't even bother to give him the time of day. And now it's hilarious because when he walks in and if we do a if we do a uh, necrophonic session or something, um, the first thing he'll, he'll get is a little girl's voice that says friends, which means she wants him to break out Penny and yep. Pippo. Yep. And then once once he gets Penny out, he'll get Penny out and sit Penny down. <coughs> and for the rest of the night, all you hear is duck, 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 duck. Oh my gosh! Bird, and it's just hilarious. She and she doesn't stop. She just it's it's nonstop. Duck, 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 bird, duck, duck, duck. It's like okay, girl, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I don't. I'm not sure that she doesn't pop her head in here every once in a while because we get that every once in a while. If we're if we're playing with the necrophonic, just to make sure that it's it's. Um, updated and and all of that. Every once in a while, we'll get it here. Duck, bird, duck. It's like, oh, you're supposed to be in Malvern. You're supposed to stay there, not here. So, Darren says he wants to try sitting in the closet with the door shut at Velisca. You have fun with that, honey. You go right ahead, Darren. Yep. Um, Yep, because I she did wants that. to come too. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in that closet. Yeah. Me too. Yep, I have too. And I think it'd be funny if we could get Shay down here because then we could just get Shay and Darren and we'll take them to Velisca and we'll videotape Darren oh, and see if we can get screaming like a girl. Yep. Blindfold him. Velisca and Melbra because they're so close by. You know, we'll have yeah. to both nights. Yeah. Whole weekend thing. Yep, because I'm sorry, y'all have seen Taylor, and I know y'all have seen Taylor, and everybody in the chat room has seen Taylor. Taylor's a big guy. Yep. He's a tank. There's hardly anything that will scare the pants off of him. I mean, very rarely does he ever walk out of a place going, nope, 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 done, nope, not going to do it. Uh, We took a day tour. We haven't even done Velisca overnight yet. We took a day tour. And um, we were in there for probably about half an hour, 45 minutes before this other group came in. And so we were wandering around upstairs and Taylor had the necrophonics in his ears and he went by himself into the attic. He no more than took about three steps into that attic, turned around and went, oh, hell no, and came back out. And we both looked at him, and we're like, Roland and I both looked at him, and we're like, what happened? You know, why why won't you go back in there? And he says, he says, I know it's not true, he says, but the minute that I hit that threshold, he says, the loudest and deepest voice came over the necrophonic and just said, demon. Oh, wow. And he goes, I know there's. He goes, I know there's no demons there. He goes, I know it's probably tra- somebody just trying to scare me, but oh, hell no. I was like, okay. And, you know, if you can get that in a day tour, and yeah. the EVP that, that we were actually able to catch on a day tour, right? I can't imagine what an overnight's going to be, and I can't wait, but we're probably going to have to wait till next year to hit Velisca. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. I just wish it wasn't so much to go. That's yeah. what stops us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That, go more. The Sally House is going to be our big one for this year, I think. Yeah. Bliska was our biggest one this year. So. Yeah. Well, I didn't get to go. I ended up with the flu, but. Yeah, she got to sit, lay in bed sick. She didn't get to go after we paid the deposit. I was so upset. It's like I got hit by the projectile, and I was like, oh, there is no way. I wanted to go back. I'm like, I kept saying, I'll be there, I'll be there. And I'm like, I won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm not going to go. <laughs> no, I don't think I could have handled that drive. So it was you only know, two of us. 
I don't blame you though, because truthfully, Allison, yeah, for people like us, yes, and when I say people like us, I'm talking about the sensitives and the intuitives. Yeah, if we go, if we go somewhere and we're not a hundred percent, yep, it's they, not good. No, they get to you. I've been dealing with this ear thing, and so yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I'm sure. I like I said, I was watching you guys the last time you were at Edinburgh, or not at Edinburgh, at Malvern, yeah. and you could tell you weren't feeling good. Yeah. Yep. Because you you seem to you seem to tire out really quickly. Yep. And you know I do the same thing when I'm not feeling good, and I go to some place, and and you know the 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 intuitiveness kicks in. Yep. Then everything else kicks your ass. <laughs> It sure does. And and the sad thing is, is I was so exhausted, but I think maybe after that whole doll thing, I slept maybe an hour. <laughs> I was up. I was just laying there because I was afraid the doll was so, going to get me. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to come flying at you. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to make sure I stayed awake on the drive home to make sure she stayed awake because she had less sleep than I did. <laughs> Been there, done that one. Quite a few times, actually. Yeah, oh, well. I, I did, when we were at Malvern, I didn't leave her alone by herself. And when she did the isolation room, I uh -huh. was right there behind that camera watching, making sure she wasn't anything happening. Yeah, that's a smart thing to do. I know that's one of the things that Roland is... Uh, yeah, she says poor physical or mental health can leave you vulnerable. It definitely does. Yeah. Um, Roland wants to, uh, when we go to the Sally house, he's wanting to do SI's da uh, solo investigations down in the basement. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. I, keep, I keep telling him, I'm like, I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> I said, because if you watch Brush with Evil 3... And if you listen to Hauser and everything that they talk about, I said, that's where all of the stuff goes down is down in that basement. Mm -hmm. um, Josh, Josh heard, we've asked him a couple of times, you know, what, what, what would be a good thing for us to know? Where should we go? Where should we stay away from? You know, anything like that. And he says, well, he says, I'll tell you what, he says, the whole place is active, he says, but the basement is probably the creepiest part of it. The upstairs is, like, not so much creepy active, but just very, very active. So, I'm I'm kind of on the, I've, I've been on the fence with this for the past, probably three, four weeks going... God, are we sure we want to do this? <laughs> because Johnny Hauser refuses to go back. Josh Hurd refuses to go back. Um, Seth Alney will not go down there. You know, so I'm sitting here going, hmm, did we bite off more than we could chew? <laughs> I, yeah. Shay, Shay put something in the chat here. She, she said, said to remind, yeah, to remind listeners, what do you do to protect yourselves before and after an investigation before and after an investigation before an investigation what i do for myself um and my team has different ways of of, of grounding themselves and protecting themselves myself i go off on my own for a little bit and i will envision just a bright white light like bubble around me and um i will try and keep that bubble visualized the whole entire time that I'm doing an investigation. Um, I may, um, I may strengthen it or I may weaken it a little bit depending on where I'm at and what I want to get out of it. Um, if I want to have interaction with the spirit, if I want to be able to speak to the spirit, um, or have them speak to me, um, then I will, I will, um, strengthen it or weaken it as I see fit. But I never let my guards down. Um, I always carry with me. I will carry a black tourmaline with me. I will carry different crystals with me just for protection. Um, after after an investigation, 
if I feel it's necessary, I will follow Santo the shit out of my whole team. <laughs> what I do is I carry, hang on a second, I'll take you with me and I'll, I will show you guys, but I can't really show the listeners. Yeah. Um, I have a bag of Palo Santo sticks, which are, they look like, and I don't know what Roland did with it. There's my sage. <laughs> um, ah, there we go. Okay, so I have a bag of Palo Santo sticks. They look like this. Uh-huh. They're, they're just like, they they look like pieces of a tree branch, yeah. you know, broken off. Right. And I will light one of those, and I will go around every member of my team, and I will talk to the spirit that is with me, and I will say, you know, um, whatever is attached to this person needs to leave this person. Whatever is attached to this person needs to stay in this place. Um, Spirit is not allowed to come home with us. Spirit is not allowed to follow us. You know, you are not allowed to attack or hurt any members of our team you know things like that if you if you if you visualize it and you um you put your intention behind it and you you put your faith into the words that you are saying it will protect you quite well yeah Yeah. um i I, I know i always say a prayer before i go in and then I've got my St. Michael's medallion I always wear. And then I've got Kelly's bracelet I bought from her with heptite, black heptite in it. And I oh, wear hematite. that for my protection. Yes, the black hematite? Yeah, hematite. hematite. That's it. That's yep. it. Hematite is a very good protection stone. Um, um, black tourmaline is a good protection stone. Um selenite is a good one to carry with you um roland i actually made roland a crystal bag too that he carries with him when we do investigations so um and roland is roland will actually sit there and say a prayer before he goes in and a prayer after he comes out um you know most like i said most of my team kind of has their own individual way of doing things so um with with me being a Wiccan and me being me being the more spiritual side of it, I tend to go more with my crystals and go more with my my um, visualizing the white light and and the guards and the walls and everything that I put up. So um, it it depends, I guess, to actually answer Shay's question. It depends on what your faith is. Yep. You do what works for you. You do what makes you feel best. If you want to carry around a St. Christopher's medal, carry around a St. Christopher's medal. If you want to carry around a uh, uh, St. Michael or Archangel Michael um, medallion, carry around an Archangel Michael medallion. Um, Like I said, I carry carry around crystals. Um, I know people that will carry rabbit's feet. You know, it's just whatever makes you feel the most comfortable and the most protected. Yeah. Um, Roland says he smokes a cigarette, maybe a shot of Cuervo, then the safety dance. (laughs) (laughs) That's what he says he does. And then Matt says he prays to the Trojan man. (laughs) You know it's really bad not even knowing Matt. I could see him doing that. Yeah, and then Roland says he visualizes Josh naked and he is so protected. Josh says he's Chris Farley's lost brother. Oh, it's getting bad in chat here. I love it. It's great. I need to go live um, today. Roland? Okay. If you're great. Josh, I love it. Yeah, if he's visualizing Josh naked, honey, <laughs> sleeping on the couch. <laughs> okay, and then and then Josh says, and you couldn't have tied that better, Roland. I know you think of the Swayze and Farley doing the Chippendales dance from Saturday Night Live, but put my face on Farley. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
my gosh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my world. I love it. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But yeah, no, Shay, Shay has a good point. She says whatever you believe in. And yep. that's what it is. It is whatever you believe in. It is whatever you're most comfortable. It is whatever you feel that you can put your faith into. I was even told, even if you're walking along the road and a, a rock catches your eye, and if you believed in that rock, it was going to protect you, it will protect you as long as you're believing into that piece that you picked up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is. It is whatever you put your faith in. Whatever, whatever you can put your intentions into. Yep. Um, R- Roland and I have actually had discussions about that too. Like if it, me being a Wiccan, mm-hmm. um, if somebody, if Roland was to give me a cross necklace and tell me that it would protect me, in all reality, it would because of the intent behind it. Right. I don't have to, I don't have to have the belief in the religion behind the object. As long as I have faith that that object is going to protect me. Mm -hmm. No matter matter what gods I pray to, what God you pray to, you know, it's the intent behind it. Yep. Yep. So true. Anyone have anything else they want to say or anything before we... Rap, we just started getting rolling yeah, here. we're getting rolling and our time's Time. up. I know. Everybody's <laughs> starting to get all funny and chat. <laughs> See, that's, that's the bad thing. Is, is time flies so fast and then things are going so well and having so much fun. And then right. all of a sudden it's gone and over. I know. Okay. <laughs> Josh oh, yeah. Him and Roland drinking. Very interesting conversations. Mm-hmm, yeah. I bet. Yeah, I've been witness to a few of those, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. There's that, it, it, if you don't want to end up running and hiding by the time they're done, then yeah. Shay says, you still have time? I know. <laughs> yeah, she says, you still have time? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. This is great. I'm just enjoying listen, reading everybody's things tonight. Uh, I think tonight went real well. I did, too. And everybody chatting away and... Just about whatever. Yeah. yeah, we did have a really good chat room tonight, it seems like. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. And it it was fun. It was just fun to just kind of roll with it tonight. If any... Okay, I'm reading Darren's question here. Yeah. If any of you came across a full-body apparition, who would you want it to be and what would you say? Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Um... Mm, do I have interesting to, one? Yeah, do I have to pick just one? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Because there's there, there's so many people that I I want to bring back just to talk to. You know. Right. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Both of my well, all four of my grandparents <laughs> because I have no grandparents left. Um, they're all gone. Um, if we're going famous people, oh, God, there's so many of those that I'd want to bring back. Um, I would love to bring back Lorraine Warren so that I could talk to her. Uh, <sighs> wow. Yeah, I, I just have, I have too long of a list. <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough one. It really is. Uh, let's see here. Matt says, Elvis, can I get a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be cool. Uh, I don't know who I'd bring. Oh, wow. Um, Somebody get the hip waiters out. Roland says, I'm innocently innocent. Uh huh. I know. Sure. That's what I said. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, right. Um, yeah, I think my major one, if I had to pick someone other than family and 
other than like movie star famous, I would probably pick Lorraine Warren because I have so many questions I want to ask her. Mm-hmm. Yep. I I think my biggest one would be my great grandma. I got along so good with her, and yeah. she died when I was like about eight years old. So I really didn't get to know her that well. I'd uh-huh. love to meet her and talk to her some more. Yeah. She would... actually, she, she's the one that gave me my first cup of coffee and told me how to drink my coffee. Oh, geez. That's great. <laughs> hey. Yeah. If we, if we were going relatives, relatives, I would probably either, either one of my grandmothers, um, or, um, Actually, if I want to go bloodline, um, one of my ancestors was one of the original, what was it, 12? That, or, yeah, I think it was 12. That were um, accused of witchcraft in Salem. Oh, wow. Um, if you look up Susanna North Martin. Uh-huh. Um, she's actually a distant relative of mine. I would like to bring her back just to oh, see cool. what the heck it was that they were trying to accuse her of. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That would be pretty awesome. Oh my gosh. Don't oh, drop my shit. Yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I, I think remember, that would be cool. I, I remember my great-grandma so well because... Uh-huh. She'd always, she always knew we were going to my grandma's because they lived right next to each other. So she knew we were coming, so she'd make homemade cookies and set the cookie jar at the back door. So all we had to do was open the door and reach in her cookie jar. She always had the lid off for us. Nice. Get trouble because <laughs> we weren't supposed to have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> we'd always spoil our supper. <laughs> that's awesome. Let's see, that's what grandma's are for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She loves she loves spoiling us kids. Kim's mom's that's the that's... first one that gave me pop. Yeah. When I was probably like two <laughs> or three, now I'm hooked on Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. It's fun spoiling the grandkids and then sending them back to mom and dad because mom and dad can't do anything about it. <laughs> well, see, I used to babysit Allison when she was a baby. She sure she did. always she always wouldn't behave for me. She always wanted to go to my mom's house, so we'd walk over here, and she was fine the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's because they take me out to eat. <laughs> yeah, mom, mom never cooked when Allison came over, because we'd have to go to either Golden Corral, or we had to go to Bonanza, Yep. or, or Chinese. Yep. You nice. could always pick. Yep. That's right. <laughs> That's why hey. I, I, I had it. I had it figured out loud, man. <laughs> I just knew if I acted up, she was gonna bring me over here, and I was gonna get to go out to eat. <laughs> there you go. Oh, gosh. As long as you had it figured out. Uh, yep, I did. I had well, it. All she had out. it figured out at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> she was just starting to walk, and I couldn't keep up with her because she was on the run to mom's house. <laughs> yep. Well, I- I could see it. I could see it. (laughs) And her daughters were the same way. Yep. Sure, they sure were. Yep, they loved coming over here. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Josh says, if you want to go distant relation, got a long ago cousin that was a close confidant to William the Conqueror. Who? Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. that's kind of cool. I'm trying to think of somebody famous that I'd like to meet. Mm, I don't know. There's some now that I'd like to meet, but they're not dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of them now that I'd love to meet. Uh-huh. Um. I don't know. I've always wanted to meet Prince. I'd probably bring him back okay. just because. Yeah, just because. Um, My daughter would probably do that one, or she would probably do Queen. Oh, Freddie Mercury? Yeah. Yep. My, yeah. my daughter is a huge fan of him. 
Yes, Freddie Mercury is awesome. He yeah. he was he was he was probably one of the biggest biggest innovators and advocates of of the LGBTQ just you know getting yourself out there and and flaunting yourself out there and saying, Hey, you know, I'm here. Um, let's see here. There was another thing. Let me look here real quick. Oh, Darren wants to know what everyone's first movie that scared the shit out of him was. Mine was Mr. Boogity. I was like five years old. I remember that movie. Yeah, there was like three of them, I think. Yep. And now I watch it and I'm like, what the hell? I was scared of this. (laughs) It freaked me out when I was little. I'm not sure what it was exactly, but I want to say it was either something like Willard, the old, old, old one, or um, The Fly or something like that. I don't know. All I remember is being over at, uh, we had gone over to some friends of my parents' house. And we'd gone over there for supper. And you know how parents are. They go off to play cards, so they stick the kids in a room and, and lay them down on the couch to go to sleep while the parents are are out playing cards. Well, for some reason, they had the TV going, and it had this movie, and I can still see the scene that was playing in my head, and it's just this. it's It's a human form, but it's this massive, almost like pile of, goo and muscles and bloody and everything stuck together and I'm sitting here looking at it going oh god and I don't think I slept for two weeks I was about five when I saw that and it scarred me for life yeah I can I I I can still to this day see the scene in my head but I couldn't tell you exactly what the movie is Uh I want to say something like the fly or something but I don't know um the ones that actually terrify me, and I hate to say it because I can watch them now, but they still give me nightmares every once in a while, were yeah. all of the Texas, all the Texas Chainsaw movies. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I really don't watch horror movies. I just never was a fan of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. But we, I, I did go to Halloween with a bunch of kids from school. Yeah. The movie really didn't scare me. It was ending up in the cemetery afterwards after the movie. Yeah. More spooked me than anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly why the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has got me so bad. But those ones got me really bad. Um, another one that got me really bad was, um, Oh, what was it? It was one of the Exorcist movies. I don't remember if it was part two or part three. I think it was, I want to say it was part three. It was the one where they had the old lady crawling on the ceiling. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that would creep me out. Yeah, that scarred me for life there, too. I was 15 when I went and saw that one. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Um, Darren said Ghostbusters. Wolf- really? Yeah. Huh? Wolf says the man with the patch on his eye, Dr. Hook. And Roland oh. says Kazam, and then Darren said Blair Witch. Is Wolf talking Candyman? Dr. Hook. I'm not sure. Josh says Dracula, the original Dracula. <laughs> Roland Kazam. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Gosh. The Blair Witch. The Blair Witch. Roland killed that one for me. Okay, Roland is a horror movie fanatic. We have almost every horror movie you can think of, either on Netflix, on on um, Voodoo, or on DVD, or on VHS. Yeah. Some. And he absolutely killed the Blair Witch for me because the first time I saw that, I was so naive about movies and I was like, this is going to be so cool. It's a documentary. 
can't wait to see it. And then at the end of it, he goes, you know, that's fake, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I sat there going, no. And he goes, yeah, watch. And he plays it back. He plays the credits back a little bit to where, you know, at the end of the credits, they always have the um, the characters in this um, in this film are fictional and any any uh, similarities are, are completely like accidental or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he plays that back and he points that out. And I'm like, dude, you just killed that movie for me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. um. Oh, Darren says that's the one where he had the old hag encounter afterwards. Mm. Yeah, I could see I could see that bringing on something like that. If you actually sit and watch if you actually sit and watch the Blair Witch, yeah, I could see that bringing something on like that. Because it is, it is, it is, I mean, it, it, it's done well enough that it'll suck you in and, and it, it will actually have you thinking it's an actual documentary and it happened. Um, so yeah, I could, I could see, I could see that Matt, you saw my ex-mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> Give me a sec here. Oh, geez, you are loud. Sorry. Just so you guys can see what the, that, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Roland. Hi. <laughs> That's great. He just got off work, so he's actually on his way home. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Yes, I get the Kazam joke, dear. No, do they get they catch the Kazam joke? He wanted to know if you guys caught the Kazam joke. You know what the movie Kazam is, right? Yeah, I do know what the movie Kazam is, yes. Yeah, the one with, okay. the one with Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, what's that comedy parody movie? Uh, scare, uh, scary movie? Scary yeah. Yeah. And then he asked, you know, what, what movie scares you? And it says Kazam. He goes, Kazam. He goes, yeah, have you ever seen Shaquille on the act? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that now. It's been forever since I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. So every time I hear somebody say, what's the scariest movie for you? It's like Kazam. Because <laughs> it's a nod to that movie, just so you guys know. <laughs> yup. Oh, brother. What do you want for food? Anybody got food orders? I'm taking food orders here. Oh, yeah. You want to drive to Marshalltown? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shay wants a cheeseburger, no onions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't care. You can grab whatever. Oh, okay. Great. If you want to get McDonald's, that's fine. I had burgers okay. tonight. It was All right. Okay. Love you, too. I'll see you after a bit. Okay. Okay, bye. bye. Darren says, burger and fries. <laughs> Shay, oh no, again with the food. Yep. <laughs> I know. I haven't eaten yet, so. Shay should know. It, it's 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 8 o'clock. He's getting off work. He's going to call me and say, what do you want for food? And the last time I was on Spreaker, I believe, when he did that was when we were on with Shay. Yeah. And, uh, Shay told him she told him she wanted a cheeseburger with no onions and he actually ha he he didn't mute it for some reason so he actually you could actually hear him go to McDonald's and make the order and everything it was awesome. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> I remember yeah, that awesome. night. Oh, good yep. gravy, that's funny. Yep, that was that was one of my favorite shows with Shay was that one. Fried bacon rat pickles. Ew. Rat pickles? Bacon no, rats, I think, pickles. not rat. Yeah. <laughs> fried bacon oh, rat. I really heard parts of that through my earbuds here. <laughs> well, okay, well, now we know where Kim's ears go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get new earbuds. These, these 
suck. Yeah, I am having a hard time hearing, but I think that's just because my ears are full. <clears throat> Do you, when you go into places like Melbourne and Edinburgh and when you go into your more intuitive side and your more intuitive state, do you get that feeling a lot where it's almost like your ears fill up on you and everything gets muffled? I do get that. See, so do I. I So good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. No, you're not the only one. I do get that a lot. And then it makes it very hard for me to understand what they're saying. Like, I'll get a whole bunch of people talking to me, but it's it's like sounds like they're underwater because my ears are so full. So sometimes mm-hmm. I have a hard time making out what they're saying. Mm-hmm. But there's other times where they're clear. But a lot of times, I'll, if I get a whole bunch of them at once, it's like, want, want, want. Sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So I, asked, I think I asked Kelly that once too, and I, I don't remember for sure if I did or not. But um, for me. Anytime that I end up going to an investigation or something and I start getting into that intuitive mode and the, and the medium mode, um, it, it, it's like you have a nasty cold and your ears just fill up. Yep. I get that a lot. Yep. I do too. And it doesn't help with, with my ears hurting and bothering me as it is. Yeah. At least you got an appointment tomorrow. So I know. Good. Get it taken care of. Go get antibiotics. I hope so. Yeah, Shay, it is. It's like being underwater. It is like seriously being underwater. Shay says like underwater. It is. It is like exactly like being underwater because it muffles it so bad that you can't understand it. Yep. It's like wah, 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 wah. Like Charlie Brown. Yep. Exactly. It actually is. I'm confused. Hmm? I, I'm I'm trying to catch up here. <laughs> What's the double zeros? I think that might be like the the wide eye thing, maybe. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Are we playing? Clarify. Clarify. <laughs> I can't see chat because it quit rolling on the computer. There we go. Whoa. Wait, I hear it back at the beginning. Oh, damn it. I don't know what I did. I just hit the button and it went. (laughs) That's what I... Shay says eyes, and I think that's what it is. I think it's the wide-eyed, you know, kind of like the, oh, my gosh, type. Yeah, probably. That's probably what it is. Good call. (laughs) Darren, what is everyone's favorite alcohol beverage? Mine is Corona with lime. <laughs> hey, now. I love Corona, but I'm also a wine drinker. Corona is nasty. I drink Corona, uh, Blue Moon, Bud Light. I've never Bud Light I've heard when me. I throw darts. I drink Pepsi, my- Pepsi, and Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, if you're if you're talking a mixed drink, it would probably be cherry vodka and cranberry juice. That might be um, good. Oh, it is. It's awesome. Um, if you're going beer, I don't drink beer. I don't like beer. I will not touch beer. Um, wine. I like the Moscato and the fruitier type wines. I like Moscato. I love Moscato. Rolling milk. Mine used to be. I have tried it. Mine used to be. I have tried lime, yes. Dr. McKillicuddy's cherry. Oh, that shit is the bomb. And, and then put it with the Coke or a Pepsi, and it gives you that cherry flavor. Ooh. Oh, it's good. It's it, good by itself, too. Her and I would drink that in our Pepsi while we were carving pumpkins. Somebody mentioned one time um, Dr. McGillicuddy's vanilla. And root beer. Oh, that, oh that would be good. Wouldn't it be like a cream soda or something? Yeah. yeah. Would it taste <laughs> like that? Or like a root beer flow? Awesome. Root beer flow, yeah. Something. I am banned from I am banned from Uzo. I am banned from Sambuca. I am banned from any of the hard alcohol shots. 
because when I used before I worked at the bar, I was a patron at the bar. And I don't know how many nights I'd be waiting for Roland to get off work and I would be passed out in a booth somewhere waiting for him to get off work. Now, if it's a shot of anything, it would have to be Dr. McKillicuddy's Cherry or Southern Comfort. Oh, SoCo. Oh. I Ooh. love Southern Comfort. No. Yeah, but... um. The, what Josh is what Josh is talking about it when he said I'm banned from Uzo is uh, a friend of mine and I, like I said before, I started working at the bar, and this is probably at least a good. Oh Lord, now I have to think. Nine nine plus years ago, uh huh. Um, a friend of mine and I. Uh, her her boyfriend and Roland worked at the bar, so we would go out every Saturday night and just go wild. Uh-huh. And um, if we were drinking, we'd either start drinking Long Island iced teas, oh, and they yeah. didn't they didn't serve the regular ones. They had the twenty ounce Long Island iced teas. Oh, yum! And then um, if we weren't drinking that, it would be Kahlua and cream, um, which is basically Kahlua and milk. Um, I've tried that. It's, actually, I'm not a big milk oh, it's really good though. It is, is really it? good. Yeah. And then if it wasn't that, it was a Colorado bulldog or, I mean, we'd, we'd find something or X-rated and X-rated and, uh, Red Bull or something like that, you uh-huh. know? And so we'd start drinking that and then we'd start or we'd switch to shots. And if we did shots, we never did normal shots. We did Sambuca. We did Uzo. We did... Um, we did tequila, we did harder shots, and by the end of the night, like I said, we would be waiting for our, we would be waiting for our significant others to get done cleaning the bar up, uh-huh. and we'd be, we'd be passed out in a booth somewhere, <laughs> just waiting for them to get done. I know there's a couple of times where they actually had to stop me and say, give me the keys because I was ready to walk out the door and drive home. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I was done. I was good. And there would have been no way I could have gotten home. Oh, Oh. now that's my job. I'm the designated driver now since I can't drink. Yeah. Well, and the funny thing is I don't drink anymore. Every once in a blue moon, I'll have a glass of wine or I'll have a a mixed drink, but very, very rarely. (laughs) Matt, oh my God, Kalu and Milk, those were some sick nights. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we've been on for an hour and a half. We better close it down so you can get ready for your Your show. show. I know, right? (laughs) Well, hey, Roland can get home and start ours. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i better do that we've got a nine o'clock show to do but i want to say thank you ladies for having me on i yeah, appreciate absolutely. it Anytime. Always have fun. it was a fun night i needed that it was great oh yeah i love getting uh, i love getting on par- and yes Shay, i hope you're listening <laughs> hint hint i'm brown nosing here <laughs> <laughs> No, I love getting on Paranormal Buzz Radio. All of the shows are awesome, and I have so much fun with you guys and Shay and Kelly. And um, one of these nights when they come back, I'm hoping to get um, Shay and Jen B on our show. So, yeah. Cool. So. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody who was in chat tonight and everybody who was not in chat listening. We thank you. Thank you for listening to us tonight. We just rolled with it, and it was a fun night tonight. So I um, hope to hear you guys and see you guys next Thursday night. See you then. Hang on, Cynthia. Thank you for listening to REP Paranormal and Friends. Be sure to check out Kim and Allison on Facebook at REP Paranormal Busters. 